I was invited to the UK to give a talk to the British Herpetological Society as well as the Norfolk Tortoise Club. My hosts during these events were Sam and Eleanor, and they hosted me at Mergate Hall, where Eleanor's family estate exists, and also the home where she maintains her turtle tortoise sanctuary. This one's like a nature area for picking natural browse, so we grow, you know, different. Plants. That's the food for yeah. the tortoises. And then here I've got an adult group of um, Hermans brought to Garai. Um, so. Wow. Um, it was, uh, about 13. Spectacular outdoor enclosures, many with access to the greenhouse. They've had extra aggregate and drainage, so. It cracks me up how, you know, we put sheets of plywood for their hide areas so they have shade, yeah. and you have glass to warm them up, warm them up yeah, and yeah, yeah. keep the rain off them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spectacular. Okay, tell me what kind of... Tortoise this this is? is um, a long term captive um, male, Morocensis, the Testudo Grica. Um, we had a lot of these imported into the pet trade. Dark shears, you get a lot of lighter ones, don't you? Over in Phoenix. But yeah, that's unusual looking. You get lots of weird stuff thrown up here. And that's from Turkey? No, that's not a Turkish. That's, um, that's a, I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely not an Ibra though. Oh, I thought you were saying it was the same. Oh, look at that over there. What's that giant one? It's a whitey. Oh, wow. Spectacular. This is a Testudo Greca white eye. Can you turn her over so you can see? See Very the small cool. spurs there? Oh, okay. You can see the head shape. Is that how you distinguish it? Yeah. You can see the head's very different in the marking. This is quite unusual to see. And how old is this one? Um, you guess? She's about six years old. Yeah. Possibly a bit longer, older. To grasp how big they are in video. Yeah. I try to explain I've this. got to hold it. Yeah. As you hold it up. I mean, that's, that's a big, a girl. big look tortoise. Look at these big chunky spurs. And look at how boxy her head is. It's almost like a gopher tortoise, you know, squarer. Yeah. And her eyes are completely different. And look look how big these yeah, these like are. Scales of an African yeah. spurred tortoise. Yeah. An Algerian. Whitey. So that's from Algeria. Yeah, and she's about four kilos. Four kilos would be like 8.8 8 pounds. Mm -hmm. So just as a comparison, range of Hermani Amani. So these are very large breeds. These are large Herman's tortoises. Tell you what, if I pop her down, I'll get a horse field. Because that you can quantify okay. that for size, can't you? Sure. You guys have in the states, yeah, and that is an adult female, okay. That's like she's twice as big, yeah, you know, more than twice the weight, <laughs> yeah. And if I turn them over, Ooh. that, yeah, see, so smaller spurs, and the markings on her head's completely different, yeah. Her. I'm sorry, look at her, bless her. Yeah. But a lot of these get egg retention in Europe because they're not kept warm enough to ovulate properly. So they might do quite well in Phoenix. Yeah. You've... I've never seen Testudo Greca whitey eye before, so it was a treat to see this giant female. The tortoises sit under the glass for increased warmth. Totally different than where I'm from. This is Bentley, Radiata. And in the UK, like even our weeds are quite rich, so you have to feed like a lot of dried grass goods to get the smooth growth, and also offer a lot of um, UV and calcium supplement. It's less critical, I think, in hotter climates 
you can get away with them finding it but in Britain this is quite unusual to get them growing this smooth six months a year we spend a lot of time in this is an insulated refrigeration unit to keep them warm enough natural sunlight and encourage feeding and positive behavior and then we also give them t5 full spectrum desert lighting because obviously we have such shorter days and we have less light and i always find it crazy going to the states because you don't need to do it because you you know you've got it already so we have to keep things so different and then we're having to feed like the dried grass browse in with weeds because even our weeds are a little bit too rich for them and feeding like a gra extruded like grass herb cob like you'd give to a horse as well and we're having to put extra calcium on because our ground has hardly any calcium content compared to where they're from and then we have to do hot boxes with humidity and if you don't this is a rescue that came in and he's a bit bumpy and this is a classic kind of early zoo example where they haven't quite got the ratio right of heat humidity diet high fiber you know it's everything yeah. and they haven't varied it and they've because it isn't just humidity that does this it's also feeding too rich a diet and not getting the heat and uv levels right so that they're metabolizing to grow properly to get the calcium obviously the not I, perfect but yeah seen much worse but the one i have grown this is i've had it since i've palm size this is austin this is my male this is what they should look like. Oh yeah, that's nice. And I think even stateside, you're getting them a bit bumpy. So I think you could learn, you could get a little bit of a leaf out of um, us Europeans trying to get them to grow like they would in the wild. And you've got to keep them lean, but you've got to also keep an eye on your humidity, UV, and also the supplementation because they are going to grow a little bit faster in captivity, and you need to help them a little bit to make sure they've got the building blocks they need. You know. And you've got your prickly pear cactus growing here yeah so they get that i try and do seasonal change because a lot of people feed the same thing all year round but i think it's really good to vary it um and they get browse so they get like grapevine leaves everyone else is out there is a i don't know where she is there is a fourth one somewhere <laughs> greenhouse and you see the little openings to go to the outside yard just a cool operation when temperatures don't allow them to be outdoors, they've got everything they need indoors. Often do, and they have absolutely beautiful jet black eyes when they want to look at you. But that is a long-term captive wild caught Turkish ibra there. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, you're going to come out. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not. So this tortoise is documented to be over 100 years old, from Morocco. Mm -hmm. Look he, how lovely the skin tone is. Looks old. Yeah. Smile. Yeah, you're a beauty. Poor old guy. So he was with the same family for about 60 years. Um, and they knew he was full size when they got him. Wow. So you, you can then yeah. take a rough estimate. And then since then, it's just gone up in terms of age. So yeah, we've got a proper centurion here. That's an Ibera. Yeah, but can you see the runny nose? And this is a problem. Mycoplasma is becoming more common. Show me the back of that shell again. Isn't that a spectacular looking tortoise? Where ours are much darker, look like the other one that we saw. Yeah, the, the grey ones. And that's all just a geographic? Yeah, it's geographical. Variance. I just don't think you've got these shipped in the States, these more gingery ones. Cool. Can, Can I step see here? Oh. You see how broad the head is? It's almost square. You get kind of more spearheaded. Yeah. Huge white spurs. Yeah. I'd say you're a male. And these are from Morocco. No, these are whiteies as well. Oh, these so are whiteies. Smaller, okay, so you get a variation, yeah. So yeah, the so whiteies can be the. One tan color as well as the dark. 
Zoom in a little. No ID. This is what you'd call a true YT. That one, I'm not sure. She could still be a YTO, but narrower. See the big spurs again? Quite a square face. Wake up. I've never seen this Testudo Greca whitey eye in the United States, so pretty cool to see this species. Based on the sign in the yard, these apparently are Ibera, the Iberian Greeks from Turkey. Just noting the black spurs on him. These tortoises have great outdoor enclosures. And of course, when you have natural outdoor enclosures, you also attract native species. Og, which they did, to find newts under it. And Look at this. A rogue slug in the middle. What kind of newts are these? These are gold crested. Gold crested newts. Mm, that's the biggest. That is the biggest. Um... Look! Look at Quick. that. I can catch him. I don't want this to fall on your leg. Just be careful it doesn't roll okay, back. Okay, that's yeah. alright. Look at the belly of these newts. Oh, whoop! Look at that. That is just so cool. Some kind of frog. No idea what. After the fact, I found out you're not supposed to pick these newts up. So if I return to England, I'll probably be arrested. But in reality, we had to do it because once we flipped over the log, we had to move them so we could flip the log back. As they turn themselves back over, they are just so cool. <laughs> Do people here not like them or care about um, them? Or it's even quite unusual because of modern pesticides, you don't get many strongholds. It's just because this is a really ancient garden and we don't use pesticides here. Yeah. Um, but we, we do, we are very fortunate that we've got these guys. I mean, obviously a lot of them here. You might find some newts swimming in that pond, but back to some of the tortoise and turtle stuff. This apparently is some of the enclosures for the hatchlings. See the calcium powder on some of the food. And that looks like a South American wood turtle, Mani. I always, I always like, like those. What's in here? See, you've trained him. Bite that finger. <laughs> Feed me! Feed me! Looks like we're back to the outdoor pen with radio tortoise. tortoises. Another radiata over Beautiful there. yard. More grass than I can have in my pens. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of some of the tortoises Eleanor keeps and of her facilities. Take care.